In our last unit, we're going to be talking about speed, change of direction, and agility. And what we'll talk about is we'll talk about how these three abilities are going to be critical for certain sports like football, basketball, soccer, etc. because they require not just the ability to move fast or move very quickly, but also the ability to change where you're moving in response to an opponent or in response to a change in the environment. And so that's what we're going to be speaking of. Now, the first one we're going to talk about is speed. And speed is simply defined as the skills and or abilities to achieve high movement velocities. So the ability to go very fast. And when I say skill, I'm talking about something that's developed through practice. Think more of like the software piece. Abilities, we're talking more of your physical characteristics. We're talking about things like strength and the ability to generate force using your muscles. And so speed is simply the combination of the skill set with the ability or the hardware together to let you move very fast. Change of direction is a little bit different. What it refers to are the skills and abilities needed to explosively change your movement direction, change the mode of activity, or to change your velocity. Now I'll give you an example of each. So the first one is changing your movement direction. If you're walking across the screen and you turn like this, that would be an example of changing your direction. Now, for it to be change of direction specifically, we're talking about an explosive change. So me slowly walking and turning isn't a great example of that because it's not explosive, but it's the same idea. Now, the next one is changing the mode. So if I was walking and then I dropped down into a crouch and then I was crawling, or I was crawling and I jumped up and started running, that would be an example of changing the mode. Mode is just, think of it as the type of activity or the type of movement. The last one then is changing your velocity. And we don't think about this in terms of change of direction, but if you start walking and then you accelerate or go into a sprint, that's a change in velocity, that's a change of direction, or that would actually fall into this category. So if, if you go slow and or break and or stop in response to that, that's change of direction. Agility is the third one, and it is almost identical to your change of direction. So it's the skills and abilities needed to explosively change direction, mode, and or velocity, but it is in response to a stimulus. So a way of thinking about this is change of direction is pre-planned. You know ahead of time where you need to go, you, you have it all mapped out. Agility is the same skill, but now you have to do it in response to your environment. So you can't plan it out because your opponent might move or the ball might go somewhere else. And so you can't have the time to plan it out. That's what the difference is between change direction and agility. All right, now we have to have a couple basic terms defined so that we can all speak and be on the same exact page. And this is all gonna be coming from physics. So if you've taken physics before, or you're familiar with the concept, hopefully these terms are familiar for you. The first one is force. And we care a lot about force because force is gonna allow us to generate those high movement velocities. It's gonna allow us to explosively change that direction, change the velocity, etc. And so force is essential for we to understand. And the formula for force is really simple. It's mass times acceleration equals force. And so if an object has more mass, it's larger, it's gonna take more force to accelerate, right? If, if you have a semi truck sitting there and it's loaded up, getting that to move is gonna be very difficult than if we took my Toyota Camry and tried pushing that, right? I could probably push my Toyota Camry if it was in neutral and get it moving. I would have a hell of a time moving a semi truck. Why? Because the mass is totally different for those two different objects. And so if we understand that, how there's this relationship between force, mass, and acceleration, we then can apply that in our understanding of how to generate these high movement velocities. The next term we're going to define is we're going to define acceleration. And acceleration is just the change in the object's velocity, right? So if we're talking about acceleration, we're talking about something either speeding up or slowing down. Now, in our terminology, we talk about the word acceleration, but we also use the word deceleration, right? So acceleration means to speed up, deceleration means to slow down. Well, in physics, we don't actually use these terms. We call both of those acceleration. And we would say that one is a positive acceleration because the velocity is getting faster, and we would call the one where you're slowing down negative acceleration. And so that's a really important key to keep in the back of your head is the difference between positive acceleration, so you're increasing the velocity of an object, versus negative acceleration where you're slowing down. The formula for acceleration is change in velocity over time. So if you're going five miles per hour and then we go down to two and a half miles per hour, 
Okay, that's, that's the change in the velocity, two and a half. And it takes you three seconds to do that. We could then divide that two and a half divided by three and we would get our exact number, what that acceleration is per second. Now we need to explain the difference between speed and velocity. And we sometimes hear these terms used interchangeably, but they have two distinct meanings in physics. So let's talk first about speed. Speed describes the weight at which an object or an individual covers a distance. So it's talking about how far you actually went. And the formula is really simple for speed. Speed equals the distance traveled divided by the time it took to travel that distance. So if I traveled 10 meters in a second, my speed would be 10 meters per second. Okay, that's the simple formula for it. Now, velocity on the other hand, describes how fast an object is traveling and in what direction it's traveling. And its formula is slightly different. Velocity equals displacement divided by time. So it's not distance, now we're looking at the word displacement. So we have these two terms here, distance and displacement, and we need to explain what exactly they mean. And so I'm gonna use an analogy of baseball. So when you're playing baseball and you start running, you're gonna start at home plate. Now, let's say you hit the ball and you're able to go from home plate to first base, okay? If you're not familiar with baseball, that's 90 feet of travel. Okay, so you traveled 90 feet. However long it took you to travel that distance, you would take 90 feet divided by however many seconds, that would tell you your distance covered. So let's just keep it simple. Let's say it took you 10 seconds to travel there. So we would take 90 divided by 10, we would get nine feet for every second we travel. Okay, that would be the distance or the speed we actually travel. Now, let's say we went all the way around the bases now. Okay, so 90, 90, 90, 90, that's 360. So we traveled 360 feet. Let's say it took us 30 seconds. And so we could then calculate our speed for that travel. Okay, that's our distance or the speed. All right, now let's talk about displacement. Now, displacement is a little bit different because we're gonna be making two points. So we have a starting point and we have an end point, and we're gonna draw a straight line between those two points to give us the ability we're looking for. So if we went from home to first base, we would have a straight line between these two X's. That would be, again, 90 feet. So in this example, it's exactly the same as distance, right? Because distance, was a straight line from home to first, and this displacement would be the exact same line. However, let's look at what happens when we go to second base. So we have second base and we have home plate. So if we went from here to here and then up here, that would be 180 feet. However, with displacement, remember, it's the shortest distance between those two points. So if we were measuring the distance, it would be about 127 feet or so between those two points. And so the displacement you would measure, you would say it's 127 feet, however long it took, 20, 30 seconds, whatever. And then it would tell you the direction as well. So you traveled, if this was a, a compass underneath it, it would be straight north, you went 127 feet north at a certain speed. Okay, so it's the direction. When we were looking at the speed or the distance covered, right, that was not directional because we went 90 this way, 90 this way, 90 and 90, right? It didn't tell us a specific direction. Displacement tells us the exact direction you travel, but it doesn't tell us what happened along the way. Okay, let's look at a third example. What's your speed if you hit a home run? Well, you went 90 feet, 90 feet, 90 feet, 90 feet. We said that was 360, say it took 30 seconds to do it. What would your displacement be? Your displacement would be zero. The reason your displacement would be zero is because you're starting and ending in the same place. So if we start and end in the same place, there is no change in how long we covered. That's the reason it's important to understand the difference between distance and displacement. Because if we just looked at speed or the distance you covered, right, we'd be counting the number of feet, but we don't know what direction you're going versus displacement. If we start and end in the exact same place, we get a displacement of zero because we didn't actually go anywhere. And so it doesn't actually account for those differences. Another term you might have heard of before is the difference between scalar and vector quantities. So speed is what we call a linear or a scalar quantity. And then 
Velocity is what we call a vector quantity. And the difference between these two terms, just to help you understand, is that the vector quantity tells us the magnitude and the direction. So it tells us how fast you're moving as well as what direction you're going. Scalar just tells you the magnitude and it doesn't actually indicate direction. And so speed being linear, it does not tell us if you're going left, if you're going right, straight ahead. It just says, hey, this is the actual speed that this individual or this object is moving.